Looking at our income tax formula, we are once again focused on line one, that being income. Remembering that the first half of the income tax equation is in essence a strange income statement where we have income minus the equivalent of expenses, those being the deduction, gets us to the equivalent of net income, in this case, taxable income. Our objective being the opposite of the normal objective. We want the bottom line taxable income to be as low as possible. So when focused on the income line, then the question is, is this thing income? And if it is, do I have to include it as taxable income or is it exempt? We're applying that thought process to alimony now. So alimony is alimony. one of those kind of weird situations. There's been a change to the tax law fairly recently. So you want to make sure that uh, you keep that in mind because there's kind of like a cutoff date type of situation. When we're thinking about alimony, we're thinking about a situation where there is a separation, married couple typically separating, a divorce taking place, and then possibly one spouse paying the other spouse. Now, typically in that kind of scenario, we have two categories of the type of payments that might go from one ex-spouse to another ex-spouse, one being child support, the other being alimony. Now, it used to be that those kind of characterizations were quite important from a tax perspective, even though it's still just one money going from one spouse to the other, because there could be tax implications. And like with any other kind of transaction, the person receiving the money then of course would have the question, do I have to include it in income or not? And obviously the, they would like to be able to say, no, I don't want to have to include it in income. I want to have the money, but not have to include it in income. And on the payer side of things, you have a situation where they're saying, I do want to include it in income because I want to be able to deduct it on the payer side of things. So that's the, the general the general fear. And it used to be that if it was categorized as alimony, then it's something that you don't have, I mean, that you uh, would have to include in income if you received it and you would get a deduction for it. But if it was child support, then the you would not have to record it as income, even though you received child support and the payer would not get the benefit of recording it as a, a deduction. Now, you might look at this and say, well, the tax code is favoring one side of the transaction or another side of the transaction, but it's also kind of just the situation that when the tax code gets more complicated, then when you, when you fill out the divorce uh, paperwork and whatnot and try to come to an agreement that's gonna be something that both sides can agree to, then obviously the tax code, whatever the tax code is, in a perfect world, if you had all the information, you would just work that into your agreement. So to me, it seems like you would kind of like to make it kind of easy on the tax code and that the tax code is not going to make a more complex situation. You want to make it, you know, so the tax code's not making things more complex than it could so that when you make the agreement, both sides have the information necessary to come to an agreement that both sides can understand and, and put into practice. And I think that's kind of what they did with the new law where they basically said, we're not gonna have this differential tax treatment. We're kind of trying to take the taxes out of it. However, if you made the contract before that new change took place, then you can't really do that retroactively because the the, the old laws are what, was, what the, the contract was based on. So that's kind of the scenario that we're in. All right, so this would be on the first page of the tax return going into line eight, other income from schedule one. And then here is the schedule one. If you had to include the alimony, then it would be here, the alimony that has been uh, received. Notice down below, they got the date of the original divorce or separation agreement. That's gonna be necessary because you've got this cutoff date now. And you would expect that if the agreement was after the cutoff date, that you wouldn't have anything recorded as income. If it was prior to the cutoff date and your agreement was made based on the prior tax laws, then you would think that you might have the income. That's the general rule.